We'll begin Mass this morning with hymn number 155, 155 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? <clears throat> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So welcome to Mass and a very happy new year to you all. It's a great pleasure to welcome you on a very special day for us in Scotland, a special day for us as members of the church, because today we celebrate the feast of Mary, the Mother of God. Um, we have many devotions uh, to Our Lady, and we know her in very many ways, but they are all significant because of today, because of the role that she played in response to the call of God in her life to be the bearer of the Christ child. So we give thanks for her humility and her willing participation in the plan of God and ask her intercession that we might share it. It's a, it's a very particular public holiday in Scotland, New Year's Day. So sometimes I think today's feast gets a wee bit lost in the, in the many other things that are going on. So we take a, a moment of focus today to give thanks and to pray fervently for our part in the plan of God. To celebrate worthily, we call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of the Blessed Virgin Mary bestowed on the whole human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, Say this to Aaron and his sons. This is how you are to bless the sons of Israel. You shall say to them, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. This is how they are to call down my name on the sons of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth. And all nations learn your saving help. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the ends of the earth revere him. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. When the appointed time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law and to enable us to be adopted as sons. The proof that you are sons is that God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit that cries, Abba, Father, and it is this that makes you a son. You are not a slave anymore. And if God has made you son, then he has made you heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, He has spoken to us through His Son. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem and they found Mary and Joseph, the baby, lying in the manger. And when they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things, pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. And when the eighth day came and the child was to be circumcised, they gave him the name Jesus, the name the angel had given him before his conception. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I went down to Greenock last Sunday in the afternoon to my niece's house beside the little sisters as she was hosting the family Christmas dinner for the first time. Um, my, previously, my mum had done so, and then when she got a bit infirm, my sister-in-law took over, and uh, it was her, her mother that, that died on Christmas Eve. So it was, it was good that she wasn't hosting us. Uh, my niece did for the first time. Uh, she and her husband, they've got a, they've got a little boy um, who's uh, four, three and a half. Uh, so he was absolutely in his element. It was the perfect time for him to be celebrating Christmas. And, uh, of course, we all uh, had, had fun playing with these new cars and all, all those kind of things um, that, that you do when you're an uncle. Uh, and uh, there were, all the family were there, so he was having a great time um, with diff different ones of us. But, but, of course, the person he really wanted to spend time with was his mum. But she was um, in the kitchen surrounded by pans of boiling water and piles of dishes and so he was he was banned from the, the kitchen and he wasn't wasn't too happy about it but uh, and I thought you know, it's, it kind of sums up in a way um, the lot of, of, of a mother um, she, she has a child she doesn't have him for long um, she has him to gestate yes but then she gives birth and that's the first of a series of givings that really never ends. Um, once she has the child, she gives the child. And then, of course, she'll want to accompany him on his life's journey. She'll want to see him grow and prosper, gain independence, achieve, uh, and eventually take his own part in a family um, and to have, in turn, children of his own. Please God. And, and I, there's something very profoundly generous about that not one single act, but repeated act of giving. So, when in the early centuries of the church, after the Gospels had been written and people alive had not known the person of Jesus themselves, they wondered how God had become man in Jesus. How, how did that happen? What, what does it mean for us? What did it mean for Jesus? And of course, they came up with a, 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 an ingenious solution that there was the one person of Jesus Christ, but that he had two natures, a human nature and a divine nature. And once that kind of controversy and understanding was put to bed, the debate arose, what was the nature of the motherhood of Mary? Was she only the mother of Jesus, or could she be also the mother of God? And because the two natures, divine and human, of Jesus are inseparable, then she was known as the mother of God. But they used a very particular word for that. Um, it was defend the Council of Ephesus in the year 351, and they were Greek speakers. So they used the Greek word, they called her the Theotokos, the God-bearer the one who bore God. Now, it means to them 
what it means to us. It means the person who gives God to us. We talk about people bearing gifts, they're giving gifts. There is the God-bearer, the Theotokos, the one who gives us God. And it's what every mother does with their child, but for us, in the person of Jesus, an extraordinarily profound gift. She gives us the author of life, as we noted in our opening prayer. So today, an extraordinarily profound celebration of a theological reality by which we are saved and which speaks of the very human act of giving that every mother does with their child, but that Mary does with her child, who is the Son of God. It's, it's, a, it's just a moment of thought to say, here is what this person, one of us, did for us. And of course, as ever, with the example of Mary, so with the example of the saints, so with the teaching and example of Jesus, what we are told, what we learn, is what we're called to do. So we, as Christians, are called to be the ones who bear God to one another. The gift of God, our gift of faith, what we celebrate, it's not for ourselves alone, not to be kept in some box somewhere. It's a gift to be shared. And we bear God to one another, not in the physical sense that Mary did, but in a real sense, because that's what we bring to the lives of people whose lives we touch. I notice what the shepherds did that touched the people who heard them so profoundly was they told what they had heard and seen. They told what the angels told them. They simply repeated the message they had been given. I wonder if we can be convinced that to bring people to faith, to change their lives with news of the generosity, the forgiveness and the call of God in their lives, all we need to do is tell them what we have heard and seen. Tell them the message that we've received, the good news. I think, and you'll know this, there are people whose lives badly need that kind of good news. And if we are the bearers of that good news, we do an extraordinarily powerful and profound thing. We bring joy and hope, the possibility of love, of forgiveness, and of life to the lives of people who need to know those gifts are there for them. So to be bearers of God to people who need to know the good news, we ask the intercession of the God-bearer herself, Mary, the mother of Jesus, generous with her own life, generous with her son, generous with all God's people. To be God-bearers one to another, bearers of the good news, to change, to touch the lives of others for each other and ourselves, we pray today. <clears throat> To pray for our needs, we stand. <clears throat> Guide your church to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary in patience, humility and trust. As we honour her for the sake of her beloved Son, grant that all Christian people may know and make known the gentle love that he knew in his human family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant that men and women may honour one another in the wholeness of our restored humanity. Bless the women who are working for peace and justice in the world. Use their service of kindness and compassion to reconcile the places of strife and anger. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we pray for our families, friends and neighbours, we pray especially for the mothers among us. 
We ask for blessing on the ministry of women in this church and in all the churches. We pray for all who work with maternal care in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on women suffering from cruelty and violence. We pray for women in societies where they are despised and treated as unequal. We pray for those who are unhappy and ill-treated in their families. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We join our prayers with the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the departed. In the hour of death, may we too be raised to eternal life and enter into their fellowship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time, and those who have asked our prayers. Pray for those who join us on the live stream, particularly if they are unwell or are caring either for members of the family or as their vocation. Pray for ourselves that we will recognize the gifts given us, the profound nature of the message that we have heard, and so be sharers of it and bearers of God to one another. And finally, we pray for those who have died. We remember those who have died recently, especially John McAleer and Sean Gordon. And we pray, of course, for the repose of the soul of Pope Benedict. And we pray too for those whose anniversaries occur around now, especially those who have been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God, Lord hear us. God our Father, you call us to be your people, to be the bearers of the good news. Give us courage and strength in our witness, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfilment, grant to us who celebrate with joy the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless and glorify your name as we celebrate the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For, by the overshadowing of your Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of her virginity, brought forth into the world the light eternal, Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him the angels praise you, and together with them we worship in exaltation. May our voices also be one with theirs in praise, as together with all the saints we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray in the words the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For all the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's stand to pray. <clears throat> we have received this sacrament with joy, Lord, so grant, we pray, that it may lead us to life eternal. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, Mother of the Church, and Mother of God. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to uh, make yourself aware of all the latest notices and all the usual ways. We don't have uh, no funerals next week, but two uh, next week. Uh, they are noted. Please remember them and their families in your prayer. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for your generosity in enabling us to be people who, of charity uh, and generosity. There's always going to be a supply of bags of, of food in our side porch here. So if you know anyone that might benefit from that, please do feel free to take a bag for them. And thank you for <coughs> helping to provide that. I hope you have a lovely day, particularly if you're celebrating together with your families, and a nice week too, particularly if you're on holiday. Uh, I sound like I'm a veteran of a few uh, raucous uh, and uh, 
whiskey fueled renditions of Old Lang Syne last night at midnight, unfortunately not the case, but just <laughs> wear and tear on the vocal cords, I think, over the past couple of weeks. So, thank you, and I hope you have a blessed, a holy, and peaceful New Year. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in with our final hymn, number 365, number 365.